everyone, I have some bad news. There's no tea left in our house, so I'm drinking coffee. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not tea. <laughs> so today we're going to be looking at some more of your questions. And if you have any further questions you'd like me to ask in my next Q&A video, then make sure you pop it down in the comments below because I'm always interested to see what kind of questions you guys want me to answer. So the first question for today is from Andrea Hart who sent me a long email and I've whittled it down to this one aspect I'm going to cover today. She says, what resources should I recommend to a friend who wants to learn to read sheet music? So, I think this is a tricky question, apart from going through a book that actually teaches you, like a beginner piano book or a beginner harp book, many of them teach you to read sheet music practically as you're playing an instrument. But I think for many of us, the tricky part of learning to read sheet music fluently and quickly is actually getting it into something that feels natural and flows just like reading a book. And I think the only way to do that is to practice and do it and get faster and faster and faster. And so I like to recommend using flashcards for that or a more modern alternative is I recommend to my students that they use an app that just kind of helps you practice quickly naming the name of a, of a note. So it will show the note and you have to quickly click which name it is and then it shows the next one and it times you how long you take to read each note and it kind of tracks your progress on how quickly you're reading the sheet music. So I'm going to recommend one of those to you today, but I have quite a list of um, different pros and cons to each app that I've tried. And if you'd like to see the, that longer list, then I've made a free download for you guys. So check in the link, the description box link, or I think I'm going to put one on the screen as well, where you can go and download that particular handout where it tells you all the details of all the different apps because I tried them all out myself. But the one that I will recommend to you is Music Tutor. It's a free app and unfortunately it doesn't teach you to read key signatures. So it doesn't teach you to be able to recognize what key the piece is, which some other apps do, but it is really great for learning to recognize notes. So try out that one, but if you're interested in the pros and cons of all the different apps, then um, check out my download. I have another question from Samantha Rose who asked a question on Instagram. Her Instagram name is Roserafina, which is so beautiful. And she says, Hi, Christy Lynn, have you got any advice on finger position, etc., for someone with little hands? I've had a couple of nasty strains, fourth finger, recently, which means which have meant I have had to leave my harp in her dressing gown for a while, which was honestly quite torturous. Isn't that so cute how she's speaking about the cover of her harp as her dressing gown? <laughs> Such a sweet thing. Um, so I do want to give you some advice because I have very small hands. I'm actually going to measure them for you quickly now. So for those of you who are feeling a bit sad that you have small hands, I can empathize. I probably don't have the smallest hands in the world, but for my height, I'm 1.68 meters. Um, I think that's uh, five foot six, and my hands are very much smaller than you would expect. They are 155 millimeters. So I can empathize. I also have small hands. <laughs> And when I did my Trinity grade 8 harp exam, I had to play, a, I was doing a lever harp exam and I played Claire de Lune adapted for the lever harp. And with all those passengers in the left hand, there's a lot of really far reaches and it's quite intense. So I do have some advice for you. Let me show you on my harp. So um, one thing I did when I was doing those passages is I turned my hand, rather than having my fingers pointing down like this, I turned my hand so that my fingers were a little bit more like that. And as I played each note for those big passages, oh, I'm in the wrong key, but it, anyway, it doesn't matter what it sounds like. I kind of didn't put all my fingers down at once. I had to just play one at a time and... <laughs> That sounds so bad. Um, but I found that if I pointed my fingers downwards, I couldn't 
stretch them as far as if I kind of turned my hand a little bit. So I would adjust the angle of your hand when you're playing really big chords, figure out what angle works for you. And then in some pieces, I would just leave out some of the notes. Sometimes you don't have to play such huge chords. Those would be my two main pieces of advice to adjust the chords so that maybe they don't have so many notes in them or leave out the outward most notes of a piece so that you don't have to play them all. And then another thing is to not place all the fingers at the same time if you're joining a passage. Rather place them one by one or fewer fingers at once. But I know the struggle and I really hope your hand feels better soon. It's so frustrating when you have to put aside your practice and wait for your body to heal. It's just one of the most frustrating feelings. So all the best with that. I hope it gets better soon. I have another question from Instagram from Haley. Her Instagram handle is Otter Faces, and she says, Hi, Christy Lynn. I would love to know how you break down your practice time into technique, fingering exercises, practicing your existing repertoire and learning new songs. I feel overwhelmed trying to decide what I should be working on for each practice session. I aim for an hour every day, and I feel like I have not progressed as well as I could have as a result. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Haley. <sighs> well, I think one hour is a great amount of time. It's wonderful that you have that time to set aside. And I'm sure you can make some amazing pro progress. Sometimes we don't actually um, acknowledge the progress we've been making because we don't see the little the little steps along the way. So I'm sure at some point you'll look back and be so amazed at your progress. And also another thing to mention is sometimes we can be pushing and pushing and pushing and practicing and practicing and not really seeing many results and then suddenly we'll see a big jump in our progress. So maybe that will happen too. Um, I encourage you to keep going. But from my perspective, you know, I think we go through different phases in our playing. Sometimes we go through phases of learning a lot of new things. Other times we're just brushing up our repertoire to perform. At the moment, I'm mostly performing. So I don't spend a lot of time slogging and practicing new pieces. I'm doing a few arrangements here and there, and then I'm mostly performing the repertoire I've already uh, prepared. But when I was going through stages of learning new things or preparing for exams, I, um, I kind of had to figure out what worked for me. I think it's a little different for each person. But what I would say is that you shouldn't try and get through everything every day and uh, break up your practice time into very, very small segments because then you feel like you're not really making much progress at all. I would say you need to figure out for yourself what are the time slots that really work for you. So would you prefer prefer to work at one thing for 15 or 20 minutes and just do three things in a session or does it work for you to break it up slightly smaller than that but what I like to do is do a little bit of technique at the beginning of a practice and then at least work on a, a short section maybe the most difficult parts of the pieces that I'm currently practicing. So that might be two or three pieces if I was working on an exam and, um, and then spend a little bit of of a bigger chunk of time working on one of those pieces for a longer period. When it comes to keeping up past repertoire, I would just play through them once or twice for fun in, at a different time of day or perform them for somebody, something like that. I don't usually put that into my practice slot because I've usually had enough performance time that my pieces, my, my regular repertoire stays up to date. But I hope that's helpful for you. I just encourage you to keep going and um, experiment with different things and don't stress out if you can't fit in everything every day because um, it's different for every person and you'd have to just fig <coughs> figure out what works for you. <laughs> There's another question on Instagram from Barbara Fisher. Her Instagram handle is Fisher uh, Fisharper Jr. Jr. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and she says, ooh, any recording, video or audio tips, social media tips, Patreon tips. Okay, so that's a lot of questions, but one piece of advice I'll give for you today is to batch record. So what I mean by that is um, when you're producing content for social media in any form, try and do a lot on one day rather than 
doing it every day or every week. So for example, with my YouTube videos, I release a YouTube video every week, but I don't record a video every week. I try and record two or three or even four videos on one day, and then I have them scheduled for the next few weeks so that I can spend the rest of my time doing other things. And I think that makes a lot better use of your time. So even for something like Instagram, I try and, um, schedule it out at the beginning of the month and plan all my Instagram posts for the rest of the month. So I think if you can spend a little bit of time planning ahead and pre-recording or getting all your footage together, I think it really helps and it makes uh, it helps you to be consistent, which is one of the most important things on social media. There's also a question from Laura Pradia, who on Instagram, she is a mountain laurel melody. Isn't that a pretty Instagram name? Um, she says, does your left pinky get tired? Particularly if I play several upbeat songs in a row, I notice fatigue in the pinky, even though I'm not using it to play at all. I'm sorry to hear that. That's really frustrating. Um, I don't get tired pinky fingers and I haven't had any students who have had that problem before. I know that some harp teachers really um, get very insistent on what you do with your pinky. I normally try and just, um, I just let people do what comes naturally because most of the time it's not really a problem. I've noticed with my pinky fingers that sometimes they stick out quite far out when I'm doing a chord, but I've never found it a problem because as my fingers play, it just comes in and all the tension releases. I know some harpists speak about the pinky should be like attached to the ring finger and always move wherever the ring finger goes. Um, but I'm not too strict about that with my students. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it, what it would be causing that for you, Laura, so I think maybe you'll have to speak to a teacher or have a consultation with someone to figure it out. But I would say one of the things that would cause that type of tension is if your fingers are curling up and not getting a chance to really relax down into that natural um, closed position that really releases tension. So um, just have a look whether your fingers in general are curling up sometimes and particularly your pinky finger if it's coming up into that position often then that might be part of the problem. So you can work on making sure that all your fingers come into straight into the palm of your hand. I hope that's helpful but otherwise um, maybe get some personal help because I don't want your pinkies to get early arthritis or something. No, I don't want to scare you. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine and I'm sure it's something that you can figure out and fix because we don't want your, your fingers feeling tired. Now there's a question from Facebook from Akemi Priscilla. She says, I always admire your arrangements when you accompany your songs. I'm not an advanced harp player, but I'd love to hear a few tips on how to arrange from chords effectively. Thank you for your kindness indeed. Such a pleasure. I'm so glad to be helping out with some of these questions. So when it comes to accompanying songs or even just playing simple left hand accompaniments when you're playing a tune, I think the best way to get started is to really get familiar with what are the different patterns you can do within a chord. So I would look at different inversions. That's the first inversion or maybe so get really comfortable with playing different inversions of a chord. You, I'm sure you can look that up online. And then also just teach yourself to play a few different patterns of accompaniment. And then with time, you'll get used to kind of swapping between these patterns and eventually it will, it will feel more natural and you'll just be swapping between them all the time. So one pattern example would be that typical 4-2-1. Or maybe it would be um, rolling a chord as accompaniment or maybe or if you were accompanying yourself singing like Silent Night. you can roll up through the chords slowly as you sing um, what else could you do or down here notice from other harpists what kind of patterns are they doing when they're accompanying their tune or accompanying their singing and then think of those like a toolkit and you can have each of those available when you're arranging a new song and maybe do different ones for different verses and with time it will become more natural going between those and adding more than one of them within a verse or in a song. 
that's a, just a very quick version. Maybe I should do a longer harp help video on that sometime because I don't know how much that would have helped you. But all the best with that. I think it's an amazing thing to be wanting to play from chords and make your own arrangements. I'm sure you're going to be great. And just give yourself some time to explore and enjoy the process because it doesn't come all at once. But thanks for your compliments about my arranging. I really appreciate it. That's all the questions I'm going to answer for today. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any other questions you'd like me to chat about, then put it down in the comments below and maybe I'll answer it in the next video. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, welcome! It's so wonderful to have you here and I hope you'll stick around because I'm releasing videos like this every week on my YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe. For all of you, I think you might be interested in having a look at my Patreon page where we'll be discussing different harp related topics every month in a live stream specifically for patrons. So if you're interested in that or some other of the behind the scenes kind of videos and sheet music downloads and all sorts of things on my Patreon page, check out the link on the screen now and also in the description box. And I'll see you all next week Thursday. Bye!